Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Plender Tutorial. It's um, we've recorded a lot of episodes now, but we are really uh, progressing and doing well, so I'm very proud of that. But I just wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone who subscribed because I think we are at about 120 subscribers. So I just want to say a huge thank you. You know, before I started this tutorial, I was at about 50 and I was like, you know, it is what it is, but uh, to almost double that is just amazing. And I feel really bad because this is a tutorial and I don't really, I didn't really want to gain anything from it. I wanted you guys to gain. So to get this many subscribers and so many people viewing the videos, it's just, it's just amazing to see. And I'm really thankful. Um, so yeah, and hopefully uh, we're going to learn uh, a lot more. and. Um, yeah, I don't know where the channel will go after that, but uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, but today, it's going to be a very short video. It's going to be about adding collisions. Um, because this is something that many people ask me how to do. Um, because uh, it seems tricky, but it's really not that hard. Um, but just before we start the video, there are um, there are two types of collisions that you need to be aware of. So I'm in Blender now, and if you have a simple model like a building, um, e, uh, yeah. So if you have a building, an asset, um, I don't know, maybe just just like a simple model, like an asset, right? Then you do not need to use these um, big collision boxes. So if you've seen a vehicle, for example, you'll have seen that. Uh, you'll have this type of collision. So this is like a box, right? And uh, you can obviously uh, move it. Wait, I'm not moving this, am I? Uh, but yeah, you can move this, whatever. You should be able to scale it up as well. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, this is like the conventional collision type. This is for vehicles. I think it's for signs and yeah a couple of other things but if you have a simple model like us you do not need to use this method and i probably won't be showing how to do the method i just showed because i'm not really that confident in it either but th for simple models it's a lot lot simpler you don't have to do anything with the definitions nothing it's just in blender so let's get straight into it so we have our model from last episode um, you can use any model you want. It doesn't really matter. Just make sure it's like a, you know, like a simple model, like a map model, not a vehicle or anything. And yeah, I have, let's say I want to make these two objects have a collision. So no matter how many objects you have in your SCS route. So yeah, just remember, we are at the stage when you've added the SCS route. Okay. So if you've looked at the last episode, you know what I mean. If you haven't, make sure you look at the last episode. We have our SCS root, and inside you can see we have our cube and our icosphere. And I want to give these both of these objects collisions. How do I do that? It's very simple. Now, what I want you to do is select the object that you want to have collisions. So we're going to do this one by one. And you're going to shift D. Hang on, I should probably turn on my screencast keys. All right, yeah. So you should press shift D to duplicate and just press enter. Do not move your object, just shift D and enter. And you'll see here we have a duplicate here because it's got .001. I'm going to rename this to collision cube, just so I know that um, this is uh, for the collisions. So you can see that it's literally on top of the other model, but to make sure you don't move it. So just undo to move it back. So we have our collision cube and our normal cube. I'm going to do the same with the icosphere, so shift D. Press enter, we're not moving it. And again, I'm going to do collision Ico. I'm just going to call it Ico, it doesn't matter. Okay? These new collision objects are the ones that you are going to give collision to. The problem is you cannot go into a normal your normal model and give it the collision because what happens in in the uh, in ETS and ATS is that if you add a collision to something the game will not render it. So the game will not render the object. So if that object had materials, it would not render that object. 
the collision is only there for it to know that if the truck hits that point, uh, it has to react. So that's why you need to duplicate each model that you want to have a collision. But you don't have to make you don't have to give collisions to everything. You know, if you have like a very small, I don't know, let's say uh, we had this very small detail here. This is like a little small protrusion, right? And let's say this was its own um, this was its own um, material. Uh, we wouldn't have to we don't have to give collision to that. You know, it's a small detail. Only give collision to the the most important parts and the parts that the truck is most likely to hit. So we have our collisions for each object and now what we're going to do is we're going to click on our collision for the cube or whichever collision you have. We're going to go to the object properties, so this yellow square and we're going to go to here the SCS object region, click on SCS parts and you can see this has a default part, okay? So this is just the default, uh, default type of model for SCS Blender, okay? But if you want to make turn this into a collision we're going to click the arrow and we're going to rename this to col it's important you spell it like this so lowercase c-o-l-l -L, okay col i'm going to make that and then what you're going to do is you're going to press assign so while the thing is selected while the make sure that it's the collision one that's selected you press assign while the col is highlighted press assign and now this collision is part of this uh, this object is now a collision object, and you're gonna do the same for the collision ICO. You can see when I switch to the other one, it's on default part. So again, you need to assign it. And if I go to the normal models, they are all default part. You want to leave it like that, obviously, because they are normal models that you want rendered, right? Um, but these ones are collisions. So how do you check that they have collisions? Well, first of all, you can check in Blender. Uh, thankfully, with SCS tools. So if you go to the SS Tools tab, uh, this is the visibility uh, tool, so you can choose what is visible in your scene. So you can see here, view model objects. If I press that, we can see our model objects. If I press view static collision objects, you can see we can also see some models. And you can see here, when, when I press this, the normal models have been unchecked. That's because they are not collision objects and you're not meant to see them. If I click here, the model icon, you can see now these, these two are unhighlighted. Okay, and that's it. I'm gonna just re-highlight these because there's one more step. Now, your, you can just literally export it like this if you wanted to, but what I like to do is just uh, give my collision objects no materials just so that it, it's a bit easier on the computer resources. So click on your object and we're going to go to the material tab and you can see we had that material from last time, the blue one. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this and you can see it's sort of clipping there because it hasn't got material now. And I'm going to, I'm going to give it a new material and I'm going to call it invisible because this, it will be invisible. And we're going to make sure we click the static collision so I can only see our collision objects. So you can see it's white, that's because it has no material, and we made our material called invisible. I'm going to scroll down and make sure you always have back face calling on. I'm not going to turn it on now because I don't need to. You can see here it says none. We're going to click it and ironically press none. Here. So you can see now it's literally just a weird box with a frame and that's what we want, right? You can see here this is how the game is going to calculate how to give the model object, uh, model collisions. And I'm going to do the same with this. So I'm going to click it. And here we're just going to click this icon. And we're going to click invisible. And it will change it to the invisible material. So now they are both invisible. They were going to be invisible anyway, but I like to do this because it's good practice um, to make everything neat. And now our collision objects have no material. They're invisible and they work. So now we can click our model. So you can see here, this is the best way to check. Model, everything is rendered because there are normal model. Collision, they're there, invisible. Everything is good, okay? Now I'm gonna uh, recheck everything. And you're gonna need to export this, okay? So you need to export this. Um, 
and I'm not going to export it because I have a lot of projects I'm doing right now and I don't want to change my project base folder but as we did the last episode it's the same process you click here um, you go to your printing tab and you click export you pack the mod and it's the same process as what we did in the last episode just uh, 